Hi there, I'm Kelly from She Sails Away. Welcome to my channel. I just got back from my first ever Mediterranean cruise and it was incredible. It was spectacular. I saw so much, learned so much. I have a lot of information to share with you, but I'm going to break that up into several different videos. For today's video, I just want to focus on the top tips you need to know that might be helpful to you when you're planning your first Mediterranean cruise. So let's get started. Tip number one, choose tours that match your physical ability. Time for an honest conversation. When you book a tour, whether it's a half day walking tour or an all day tour on your feet, read your tour description carefully. At the end, they will describe to you the level of physical activity involved. It might be moderate, light, strenuous. They'll tell you if you're going to be walking several miles. They'll tell you if there are uneven footing surfaces or stairs. Be honest with yourself. Assess your own physical ability. You want to go on this tour and enjoy it. You don't want to be struggling. You don't want to be miserable. You don't want to be the person who slows down the whole group. You can't just count on being able to sit down and rest if you need to. Your tour has to keep moving. So my tip for you, be honest in your assessment of your own physical ability. When you book a tour, make sure it's a tour you realistically can keep up with, be comfortable, and enjoy. Let's talk about restrooms. They're kind of hard to find over in Europe and the Mediterranean. This was a surprise to me. Um, my tip for you, be prepared to search for restrooms. They're not necessarily available in every single coffee shop or cafe. Maybe learn the language of the country you're going to so you can ask where the nearest restroom is. Most of all, have some Euro coins in your pocket. Lots of little change Euro-wise. Because often when you do find a public restroom, you have to use a Euro coin to get in. Many of them have little turnstiles in the door, just like a train station. And you can't get in unless you happen to have the correct change. My next tip, try the gelato. This is pretty self-explanatory, but I'm telling you, Italy has incredible gelato. I also discovered Spain has incredible gelato. Try the gelato. A practical tip for you is to mix up your port days. Now you're going to find that the Mediterranean is port intensive, obviously, and there are some ports where you're going to go out and be gone all day, maybe on a booked tour, possibly to Rome, possibly to Florence. You're going to have some places you go where you have extremely long days. Make sure you don't have five or six of those in a row. Mix up your really long days with unplanned port visits where you just wander, maybe you just go hit a few highlights and you keep things low key and easy. Allow yourself a day or two to sleep late. Allow yourself a day or two to get back to the ship early. Don't exhaust yourself too early in the cruise. You need to last all week because everything is worth seeing and you don't want to skip anything because you're overtired. So mix up your really long port visits with a few short ones. In case it's not obvious, over in the Mediterranean, the sun is intense. Whether it's especially warm or not, the sun is just so intense. My tip for you, bring sunglasses, bring a hat. Don't bring a little visor. I'm talking about a full hat to protect your scalp and your hair and be prepared to protect yourself from that blazing sunshine. On that same note, as I said, super hot over there. Bring some water with you when you're out sightseeing or plan to buy some water while you're out. And again, that's why you need euros. But if you're going to bring a little backpack to hold a few bottles of water, make sure it's a smallish backpack, depending on where you're going. Some sites will not allow large backpacks into the site and there's nowhere to put them. So if you have a huge backpack filled with stuff, you might not get to go in where you want to. Bring a smallish backpack, put some bottles of water in there, Stay hydrated. 
worth another mention. Try the gelato. Try the gelato. Some places you're going to visit, such as cathedrals, the Vatican, some churches, some of those places will have a dress code. And by this, I mean no bare knees, no bare shoulders. If you're planning on wearing a sundress, a tank top, shorts, you may want to check ahead of time where you're going if that's going to be okay so that you don't get turned away. If you're doing this through a tour, it will tell you at the end of the description of the tour if there is a dress code. Otherwise, if you're visiting a cathedral or church on your own, just look it up online before you go so you don't run into any problems. If you're gonna go out into the ports for hours and hours and hours on a really long tour, for example, one thing you definitely need to bring is a battery backup for your phone. Now you may not use your phone much, still a good idea to have battery backup because you just never know when you need it. But most people today take lots of photos and videos with their phone. You may be texting friends or family if you get separated, if you're traveling with others. Whatever the case, your phone battery will probably drain more quickly than you expect. So just to be on the safe side, I recommend packing a battery backup for your phone. My next tip for you is to be prepared for rain. It may rain off and on during the day or during the week while you're out sightseeing. So if you're in the middle of a 10 hour tour and it starts raining, your tour is going to continue. So be prepared. I'm suggesting that you pack a small rain poncho or a travel umbrella, one of those things. Now you may find that the minute it starts raining, vendors come out of nowhere and they're selling travel umbrellas and little rain ponchos but you can't count on that. So make yourself comfortable, be prepared, be prepared for rain. My next tip for you is to prepare for the ports you're visiting, especially if you have specific sites in mind that you're going to go see on your own. If you're doing a tour, this tip doesn't really apply, but if you're exploring on your own and you're going to visit somewhere historic, my suggestion to you is to read about it watch some YouTube videos on it so that you really understand what you're seeing. For example, my son and I went to Pompeii on our own. So we booked shuttle tickets over there and then we went into the park and just wandered around. We loved what we saw. It was fascinating. Pompeii is incredible. I'm going to have a separate video about that in the future. It's huge and there's so much to see and take in. And because we weren't with a tour guide, we didn't really have a lot of comprehension of what we were looking at. Obviously, most of the signage was in Italian and we just kind of missed out on an opportunity to really understand what Pompeii looked like back in the day, what exactly happened to it, how it came to be discovered and excavated. Knowing this information before we went would have added quite a bit of meaning to what we were seeing. We still enjoyed it. We did all those things afterwards as far as learning about Pompeii, but in hindsight, I wish we had done that beforehand. So my tip for you, if you're going to go somewhere historic and meaningful on your own, read about it ahead of time. This next tip is mostly for solo cruisers. When you're seeing these incredible sites, you're taking hundreds and hundreds of photos of the Colosseum, the Roman ruins, the David, all these things. Remember to occasionally put yourself in the photo. You don't want to go home with 800 pictures of Rome and not one single picture of yourself. You want to be able to look back on this time and this very special vacation for years and years to come and, and see yourself in front of those landmarks. So if you're traveling solo, grab somebody from your tour, grab somebody walking by and say, hey, could you please take my picture? And remember to just get a few photos of yourself along the way. That wraps up my top tips for you to have the best Mediterranean cruise ever. I hope if you go on your first ever Mediterranean cruise, you'll leave a comment here and tell us all about it. And I hope you have a wonderful time. I am already booked to go back next year and I just can't wait. It was spectacular. Thank you for stopping by and I hope you enjoy your next cruise. Happy sailing.